Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a review on the iPad 10. Yes, this is the iPad 10 and I do have also another video coming soon on the keyboard as well. More about that in a little bit, but the iPad 10. I have been using this for the best part now of about a week really, using this device as my main iPad. I actually sold my iPad mini this week because I've actually got an iPad Pro 11 inch now. Um, and I've been kind of like comparing this with that and I haven't really been using that as much this week because obviously I've been wanting to give my thoughts on this. Now comparing the two devices of course, um, there was a lot I really liked about this iPad. Uh, the fact that you know we do get that really really nice uh, colors um i do i didn't like the yellow initially when i unboxed this if you guys remember i've also been in the apple store since and and there i got to see the pink the, the blue and also the silver the blue is definitely my favorite the pink is also really nice um so yeah really really nice that um, there's some good colors on this ipad but this being an ipad what is its perks well I really enjoyed having the bigger screen, like coming from a mini, um, you know, using a mini every day. I really thought that the mini was my form factor iPad. Really loved it, loved that device and I still do. I did an entire video on that. Why I switched from an iPad Pro M1 down to down to this, down to the mini. But yeah, now going back to a bigger screen, a 10 point, uh, 10 point five inch screen, I believe this is. And what do I think about it? Well, this as an iPad, like using this as a reader, online shopping, whatever you want to do, browsing the web is I think the best iPad you can buy. Now let me explain. I said in my unboxing one of the reasons why I didn't want to have this iPad over for instance like the iPad mini or like the even the iPad Air is because of that laminated display. Now that's a big thing for me with an iPad. I will never have an iPad that doesn't have a laminated display. That's what, exactly what I said and that is what I still kind of believe. However, this iPad's laminated display is very very good like it's i'm fussy with stuff like this normally you know what i mean this laminated display is very hard to get across camera i would highly recommend you go to an apple store and put it side by side if you can with an ipad pro which i have done uh, with my 11 pro which is here i have put it side by side and it is not worth the price difference to go from you know, to have this ipad versus that ipad I'm not saying that this is the perfect iPad for you. The Pro can still be perfect in other ways, which I'll get onto. But this iPad for me is very, very good at, at that screen side of things. It, it, even now, it still shocks me. I've just been looking at photos from my holiday on here and stuff. And, you know, it's it's phenomenal. Like, the immersion that I get for this iPad is, is second to none. I've also had the Liquid Retina XDR screen, which, in my opinion, is the best Apple screen out there. But this is just perfect. Like... It really, really is good. For the price, for $499, it's really, really good. Another great underrated feature of this iPad is we get stereo speakers on either end. So I actually watched an entire movie on this iPad. Um, really, really great immersive experience. Um, the sound was fantastic coming from it. I actually watched, it wasn't a movie, sorry, it was Miss Marvel. I just finished a few episodes on there, like two or three episodes. And I thought it was great. Really enjoyed it. Um, it was really immersive. Um, the deep blacks were, were deep enough on like the black bars around the screen. They didn't like distract me, which like they have done in the past on previous iPads. Um, but yeah, having those those um, you know speakers and stuff, I think is a fantastic addition. Of course, goes without saying. Also, having the USB C port is fantastic. But yeah. Great. One of the things that I actually like using about an iPad is I don't really use my iPad to like take FaceTime calls. An iPad for me really is just, you know, something that I want to just sit down and consume media, whether or not that's TikTok, which by the way, if you haven't got TikTok on your iPad, that is my best like viewing experience. Uh, it's just fantastic on an iPad. I love it. So for me, with a camera, as I was going to touch on, the camera being where it is in the middle here, it doesn't really make sense for me. Because the iPad for me, I don't think should be in a case like this. It shouldn't have a keyboard. I just think it shouldn't. This entire combination here is totaling 780 quid for these two devices. This has got 64 gigs of storage, by the way. So if you want to up that, that's probably going to be best part of 850, 900 quid for this combination. And when you're at that price, as I've said in my unboxing, you are close to an M1 MacBook Air which comes with a keyboard, which has Mac OS, which does a lot more, which is an actual laptop. I would not recommend having one device like an iPad to become your keyboard. I absolutely hate how Apple does this. I think it's the most, 
I think it's really, really bad on the consumer. I think it's really an Apple-like as well. They know that the product they're selling is really bad, and I feel like it's really unethically wrong of them to sell a device like this for 250 quid. When you merge this with like this, this can't do much. This doesn't make this any more smart than this is on its own. It's the best way to summarize it really. And that is why this device here, I think is Apple's worst ever accessory. Big claim, I know, big claim. But hear me out, there's a few things use case wise. So it attaches on, and that's fine. Really strong magnet, very, very good. No, no, no problems there. So that's on, that's fine. The back panel then goes on, magnetizes on. It's not as strong on the back, I've got to be honest. The idea with this case is you can kind of take the keyboard off and then you just got like a back piece on there. But the back piece is really, really thick, like stupidly thick. It's not as thick as, you know, the actual folio case. Let me show you the folio case here on my iPad um, Pro. You can see, look how thin that is, just on the back there. Super thin. It was super thin on my iPad mini as well. So look how thick that is, ridiculous. Then when you're trying to find the kickstand, sometimes you can get it, sometimes you can actually pull it out. But a lot of the time I found that I was like actually pulling the actual thing off all the time because there's no actual like proper grip there. If you get a grip, a lot of the time you just take the actual thing off. It's really, you have to like kind of like, it's not intuitive. And I think it's one of the worst products Apple's ever made. Granted, I really like the, you know, the different angles they can go to. You know, the fact that you can change this allows you to then put it in many different angles, which is great, don't get me wrong. But for the price, I wouldn't recommend it at all. So the keyboard for me is the worst. I think it's the worst worst accessory Apple's made just because of value. Like to me, if this was 150 instead of 250, I'd say go for it. I would even go as far to say, make this 150, but get rid of the trackpad um, just to give people a keyboard. Um, I think that would be a good value because the people who are buying this, I don't know if they want this. Like this is the problem. I love this iPad. All in all, love this iPad. The only negative then next that we haven't touched on is of course the Apple Pencil, which I haven't got a generation one pencil. I actually have a generation two pencil, which is attached here to my Pro. I disagree entirely with this iPad because of the pencil. For me, I already have a pencil, uh, a pencil two. I am not gonna go and buy another pencil and then sell that one and all that jazz. Um, I like the, having the pencil on here. If this iPad for me had the pencil to support, then this would be my favorite iPad out there. So I have a few rounding, rounding off summaries of, of what I think you should do. If you want an iPad to just be an iPad, to consume media, you're gonna use it in this format with, you know, not this case, but a case like the folio or some sort of case on its own, no keyboard, then you buy this. You buy this, this is the best iPad for consuming media with a bigger screen. If you want the smaller screen, you get the mini. That's it. If you want an iPad that has Apple Pencil support, you then should buy an iPad Air because you get the Pencil 2 support, which to be honest, I'm still shocked that Apple sells the Pencil 1 now. It is so old, it is so out of date. You got the whole EU USB-C law going on. They're selling a pencil that's got lightning on it still with an adapter, which is just, it's just ridiculous. I just can't, I don't understand why they're selling it. But if you want to draw and you want that pencil experience, you buy an iPad Air. That's the best value, or a mini of course, because that comes with the Pencil 2. Any iPad that comes with Pencil 2, you should buy. But this is a great iPad for being an iPad, um, which is what the first one is. You know, it's, it's got that pencil support for people who want it, but it's not like the pros are gonna be getting it. Um, it's more from an educational point of view that it's supported by a pencil, which is a good thing. But if you just want an iPad to be an iPad, this is fantastic. Like, it is fantastic. Like, the screen for me was a big no-no, but honest to God, the screen isn't as bad as the previous non-laminated displays. It actually sells it to me. It actually is fantastic. Like, very, very worth the price. And then don't get me started on the keyboards. If you want an iPad with a keyboard, don't even bother. Just go and buy a MacBook Air. Honest to God, you would be better off buying a MacBook Air and buying this iPad as a separate device. Like you would spend the price of like a 12.9 inch Pro 
but you just, if you want a keyboard experience, like a laptop experience, the M1 MacBook Air is the best value Mac over the last probably 10 years. Like, honest to God. Like, the price point that is now, I think that was the price point that we had, like, the chunky MacBook Pro at one point with the SSD, not the SSD, the hard drive inside it with the disk drive. Like, the value that that device brings is fan is fantastic. It's, like, the best laptop value ever. So there it is. There's my thoughts. This device isn't useless. It isn't as useless as I thought it would be. Let me just take this case off. Don't buy this case, guys. <laughs> but yeah, this device isn't as useless as I thought it would be. It's actually better than I thought it would be. Um, I'm really pleasantly surprised by it. It has got bigger bezels on it as well, but they didn't bother me. It's a nice, fresh, modern design. Um, but as an iPad, it is the best iPad. Just, that's what, that's what this video is called. The best iPad. It is the best iPad. But it's the worst at other things. It's the worst with a keyboard. It's the worst with the pencil support. So I'm not saying things you don't already know. But what I didn't know is that this would be the best iPad. So yeah, there it is, guys. There's my review. Thanks for watching.